San Diego Freeway southbound is very... Frank uh, Powers does not have a regular job. A first-class flyer, he is now occasionally a traffic pilot over the Los Angeles Freeway. He once flew higher than anyone had ever been before and reported on a different kind of traffic. And on the east side, the Hollywood... One-time spy for the United States. Well, I was the one that got caught. I was the one that embarrassed the president. I was the one that embarrassed the CIA, which uh, was in no way my fault that I could see. In 1956, Francis Gary Powers, now a lieutenant in the United States Air Force, was recruited to work for the Central Intelligence Agency. The um, CIA, I had heard of it before this. I knew what its purpose was, I knew um, what they did, but they were a very little known organization at that time, and uh, I probably knew as much or as little as anyone else. I knew hardly anything about it, except that I knew it was a, a highly secret intelligence gathering organization. So they had this plan with a new plane to do espionage over the Soviet Union. This plane was the Utility 2, the U-2. Developed by Kelly Johnson of Lockheed, it was intended to fill an important gap in U.S. intelligence. Coming under the CIA, the U-2 was given a civilian cover, that of weather research. Stripped of every non-essential feature, including wheels, it was designed for only one purpose, to carry photographic and electronic spy equipment to a very high altitude, beyond the reach of aircraft and rockets. It could fly in excess of 80,000 feet. We had a minimum altitude that we could penetrate to the Soviet border. I got to that altitude, gave two clicks that everything was okay and I was going on, and then radio silence from that moment on. Headed across the border with the usual apprehension that one has, you know, crossing this imaginary line, and then once you get across, nothing happens. You settle down, do your job. Power's job was to switch on his cameras and electronic monitoring apparatus at certain points on his line of flight over airfields, industrial complexes, rocket sites. Roughly halfway on his journey, as he neared Sverdlov. This a big explosion took place, and the explosion, I'm sure, was behind and to the right of the airplane, but I don't know where back here. I didn't feel an impact against the aircraft. All I felt was a, a sudden acceleration like that. It just set me back in the seat. Each U-2 plane was fitted with a self-destruct mechanism, and pilots had orders to use this if forced down over Russian territory. Each pilot was also issued with a poison needle, which he could use to avoid torture. The Americans therefore assumed that it was unlikely that Powers had survived, or that much of the plane was left intact. So they gave out their prepared cover story. An unarmed plane, a U-2 weather research plane, based at Adana, Turkey, piloted by a civilian, has been missing since May 1. During the flight of this plane, the pilot reported difficulty with his oxygen equipment. Mr. Khrushchev has announced that a U.S. plane has been shot down over the USSR on that date. It may be that this was the missing plane. It is entirely possible that having a failure in the oxygen equipment, which could result in the pilot losing consciousness, the plane continued on automatic pilot for a considerable distance and accidentally violated Soviet airspace. The United States is taking this matter up with the Soviet government with particular reference to the fate of the pilot. In reply, Gromyko, the Russian foreign minister, commented, perhaps the crews of all American planes lose consciousness when they cross the border. This must really be a problem for medical science. Then, brandishing his proof, Khrushchev exploded his bombshell. The pilot of the airplane was alive and kicking, and the Russians had the plane's wreckage. The pilot worked for the CIA, and this had been a routine spy flight. Khrushchev showed photos of strategic sites taken by the U-2 over Russian territory. I felt that by talking to them as freely as I could, tell them the absolute truth about everything that they knew about, I could establish a basis of truthfulness. So when it did come to a, a sensitive something that I didn't want to tell them about, 
I could lie and they would believe me, and this, this worked fairly well. But there was still this threat of torture, and I felt that if I were tortured, that any information they wanted, I might give. I didn't know how I would react to torture, so that if I could prevent this anyway, then I had to do it, because I had some information that they could have used. To his surprise, Frank Powers was not tortured. The Russians wanted to put him on trial before the world, and for that, they needed him in good bodily health. The Moscow trial was well attended by the world's press. Powers' parents attended, and much was made of the fact that Powers' father had been a coal miner and thence a proletarian. He refused to accept money from the CIA to pay for the journey. Two American lawyers attended as observers. They were paid by the CIA to try and see Powers and find out, if possible, how the U-2 was brought down and how much Powers had given away. Frank Powers spent only 18 months of his 10-year sentence in a Russian prison. He was released by the Russians in exchange for the master spy, Colonel Abel, who had been caught some years before by the Americans. But now Frank Powers felt himself to be a prisoner of the CIA while he underwent extensive debriefing. I didn't realize exactly what was going to happen, but one of the first questions was, did I have a secret Swiss bank account? And another was, um, had I done anything in the Soviet Union that uh, I might be blackmailed for? So it was obvious that they were trying to find out if, uh, or and they also wanted to know if I was a double agent, this type thing. And uh, that was just uh, a very small part of it, but it was enough to uh, make one angry because uh, the insinuation was there. In the Cold War atmosphere that prevailed, Powers was a controversial figure. His loyalty in the eyes of many was in doubt. He was used by much of the press as a scapegoat for the major embarrassment that the U-2 affair had been to national pride. Why had he not committed suicide with the poison thoughtfully provided by the CIA? Why had he not operated the self-destruct switches on the plane? What had he given away to the Russians? Above all, could he be trusted? Or had he been brainwashed? Powers was summoned to Washington to attend Senate hearings on the U-2 affair. He was cleared of all blame by the Senate committee. But the questions continued. Would you do any the CIA has uh, influenced my life a great deal, even before, but ever since I got back. Uh, and supposedly, you know, not working for them. In fact, I was not working for them, to my knowledge. I was supposed to have been working for Lockheed, but yet they still, through contact with Lockheed, uh, controlled what I did and what I said. They tried to keep me from writing a story for a long time, and of course I went along with it, thinking I didn't want to do anything that would uh, harm our, our government. While awaiting permission from the CIA, Powers delayed writing his book, Operation Overflight, with a great sense of injustice. He waited several years. Because of all of the bad publicity that I received, I felt that maybe I should tell my side of the story. Finally, I just went up to them and said, well, I'm going to write a book. My book was published in May the 1st, 1970, 10 years after I was shot down. Actually, by doing this, I might have uh, caused myself a little trouble. Powers had worked for Lockheed's Kelly Johnson for over seven years. Suddenly, he found himself jobless. When I was let go from Lockheed, Kelly Johnson told me that the CIA had not come through with another three months' pay for me, so he had to let me go. Well, he says that he didn't fire me, but when he asked me if I could be gone the next day, I assumed that this was being fired. They don't want people to write a book. That is the reason, apparently, that I'm finding difficulty getting a job. And they're showing everyone else that maybe you shouldn't do this. 